In this episode, we're talking about pacing in our language classrooms and figuring out how much time we should plan to have students spend on any particular activity. Part of this involves when and how to use brain breaks. Fadi Abugush, an Arabic teacher in Chicago, has a wealth of information and ideas on this topic. So let's jump in. Are you a language teacher looking for some reassurance that what you're doing in the classroom is on the right track? Or maybe you're looking for some ways to teach even more effectively. If you're one or the other or somewhere in between, you've landed in the right place. This is the World Language Classroom Podcast with your host, me, Joshua Cabral. You're about to get tips, tools, and resources so that your students continue to rise in proficiency and communicate with confidence. Let's jump in. Vamos, allons-y. Hello, my friends. Bonjour, mes amis. Hola, mis amigos. Welcome to the World Language Classroom Podcast. I am Joshua Cabral, and thank you, as always, for taking the time out of your week to listen to teachers talking about language teaching and then thinking about how that might be useful in your classroom. So thank you for being that incredible educator that wants to take the time to do that. So our topic today is, I'm calling it pacing and brain breaks in the language classroom. But really, the topic is going to be about structuring our classes in a way that it feels organic, that activities are moving from one to the other without spending too much time on them, or they're too short and students aren't really getting much out of it with the different modes. And what do you do between activities? That's where the idea of brain breaks would come in. And so I'm joined today by Fadi. Abugush. Fadi is an Arabic teacher, and he's from Jordan, and he currently teaches in Chicago at a math and science school as part of Chicago Public Schools. So he's been teaching for 15 years Arabic here in the U.S., and as I said, he's originally from Jordan, so he has presented at ACTFL a number of times. He is the Best of Illinois workshop, but he's also, in addition to Central States, at Nectful Northeast, and he's an international presenter as well. Fadi, I hope I did some justice in presenting who you are. So again, welcome to the World Language Classroom podcast. Uh, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and talk about my activity that I do with my students. So, and, and you did a lot, a like, good job. You're a pretty interesting person. So I wanted to make sure I got it all in there. I had asked you before we started recording, when you do your workshops uh, at Actful and different conferences, if you're specifically doing workshops for Arabic teachers, I had asked you if you have a fair number of attendees, Arabic teachers, and you said there were. Before we get into our topic of pacing and brain breaks today, I would like to just hear a little bit about the state of Arabic in the United States and the numbers of teachers and students and what's happening with Arabic teaching in the U.S. right now. So Arabic is fairly a new language in, in the United States. So we don't have, like, for example, Chicago Public Schools. And actually, the Arabic teacher is the most in Chicago. We have the biggest Arabic programs in Chicago public schools in the state. We have five schools who teach Arabic in high school, and in elementary school, we have almost 12 schools. In my school, Limblum Math and Science Academy, we teach just two languages, Chinese mm -hmm. and Arabic. Mm -hmm. So right now, I have, we have almost 300 students who study Arabic, and they are oh, most of them, or 99% of them, non-heritage speakers. A lot of my students right now studying minor in Arabic in universities. I have a lot of students that are working in embassies or in government and stuff like that. In the United States, we don't have a lot of teachers. Like usually because of that, we don't have like, for example, AP for Arabic. Because in order to have AP, we have to have Arabic in each state, in each state. We have some organization who help improve uh, like Arabic or have like workshop for Arabic, like Qatar Foundation International in Washington, D.C., they started teachers' councils in some regions 
in the states and one of them are in chicago so i am part of the board in the arabic teacher council in chicago thank you for for giving us that sort of update on the the state of where arabic is and in, in teaching it's wonderful to hear how robust the program is in chicago so congratulations i'm sure you had a lot to do with that so congratulations on thank that thank you so much yeah welcome so as we as we jump into our topic for today about class structure and pacing I think that when we look at putting together our classes and the different activities we're going to do, a lot of times we don't plan the pacing and structure a lot in advance. Like we know I'm going to do this activity, then I'm going to do this activity. But how important is it when we're putting our classes together to almost define like the amount of time so that the pacing of our class works? This is funny because already at the beginning of each semester or each year, I have to know which class I will be teaching in. Are, uh, am I going to move from a classroom to a classroom? Am I using, like, for example, one of the years I taught in three classes. We have a lot of students in my school, so we need to... Uh, I need to know where I am going. Is it like I have to move with a car to a classroom or I'm going to use my own classroom? Lucky me, this year I'm going to have my own classroom. But another teacher is using it also. So whenever I am free, I have to move from the class. Another teacher will come to the class. At the beginning, of course, I have to sit with like other Arabic teachers. So I teach Arabic 3, 4, and 5. I have a teacher who teach Arabic 2, Arabic 1. And we usually sit and we decide on the units, the themes that we are going to use for this school year. For me, this is change every year, change every semester, based on the what is on the like for uh, what is important for the students or affect the students in this year. For this year, for example, I'm going to change some of the units to reflect what's happening in the world. And this year, uh, in November, we will have the World Cup. The World Cup it's going to be in Qatar. It's Qatar is an Arabic country, so it is not fair not to teach about the World Cup. So this year I'm going to teach for Arabic 3, 4, and 5 at the beginning, or in November, um, sorry, September, no, uh, October, the World Cup will be in November, all about the World Cup. Like, um, so I designed some lesson plans or some unit, I'm sorry, uh, a unit, a whole unit about, about the World Cup. For Arabic 3, for example, we have a unit about hobbies. So I will include this with the World Cup to reflect the World Cup. Usually when i the talking about pacing, I usually in my school it's a proficiency-based learning. We include the performance indicators. So the grade will be for the performance indicators. And we have five performance indicators. I'm going to include, uh, add another one for culture, but the performance indicators are for uh, reading listening, presentational writing, presentational speaking, and interpersonal speaking. And the grade will be from four, you know, for performance indicators. And so in the classroom, and we teach a whole block, 100 minutes. So I need to have all these performance indicators or all these activity included in the lesson. So usually I start with warm up. Usually I start with calendar talk like talking about oh, what is that what is today whose birthday is this like you know like uh, and this is good for building community in the classroom then i will start with comprehensible input activity the first activities usually i like i use seven minutes to ten minutes that's it then i like i move it to the students who have to practice it will have like a student centered activity they will have will have some activity where they stand up like um, the two lines or circle um, um, like the two circles and the students will speak about the same thing they practice so usually input output input output at the end, like this is what I use, usually I do in the classroom. We'll have brain breaks during the classroom, in the whole classroom. When you say seven to ten minutes for an activity, and then you're moving on to a brain break, some sort of transition, Yeah. do you then return to the same activity and continue with it, or are you changing to a different activity? Usually when I design the activity, it's going to be seven to ten minutes. 
unless I will go like, but most of the time I will go to another activity. Sometimes based on the students, I will know, oh my God, they are, uh, I look at their faces and I know from their faces that they need brain break right now. So we'll have mm -hmm. a brain break. So this is how I do it in the class. You're keeping it open to organically what's needed. Yes. You know, so if you're, you're reading your students' yeah. reactions and it's yeah. time to move on. So I'm thinking with an interpersonal activity, seven to 10 minutes seems like that would work. And then moving on, I'm curious about the transition from doing an activity to a brain break, then sometimes returning to the same activity like writing. And what is that like to get them back focused on task? Usually when it is writing, I don't stop them when they are going writing. Writing is like, it's not like it's stressful to do it, like finish the writing and finish it. So I don't um, stop the writing to do brain break. Usually the brain break, most of the time is going to be after an input activity. When I speak most of the time in the target language, usually the students will ask for a brain break. Like when it says, mm -hmm. says brain break. Brain break. Mm -hmm. Like if two students ask me for a brain break, I know the other students, they are shy to ask, so I will do a brain break. Usually I do like um, check for understanding when I am in the classroom, uh, when, whenever I do something in uh, comprehensible. Okay, for example, um, we have sometimes uh, show me your hands. And if it is like one, four, three, two, one, it's, it is four, they are with me. Two, I see a lot of twos. Okay, they need a break. Usually, I always put a card on, on, the, on their desk. If um, green, they understand. If a lot of students flip it to red on the other side, I know that they need help or they need, like, they, like they are confused or something like that. <laughs> on my whiteboard, I have, I have like two side uh, white paper. Where is it? Arabic on the one side and the other side in English. So if they have somebody, if they have a question, they will have, they will ask, ask uh, can we speak in English? And I will flip it to English and they will ask me the question that they need help or something. This is for a check for understanding. And this is, will help me a lot for them uh, like to know where are they right now if need help if they need help am i fast or something like that i really like the idea of using the the green and red card where you can just get that sense of looking around the room and doing that comprehension check that way it's it's very organic and and working through i'm i'm definitely going to try that this year that's one of my things i'm putting on on my my list of things to do as soon as we start the school year so when we look at this idea of brain breaks, like you've looked around, you've seen that this is time for one or you've planned for one, what are the benefits of doing a brain break? Rather than doing an activity that lasts 25 minutes, what is the benefit of stopping the activity, making it shorter, and then doing a brain break? How does that serve the students? It is from the name brain break it's a break for your brain like when they finish the brain break the students will be more excited the, the, like the attention span will like they will be more into the class and usually the students know when i use a lot of brain breaks the students know oh my god i'm tired but the teacher will do a brain break let me concentrate in two minutes the teacher will um, have a brain break usually i will have in the agenda like I will put line in red, red, brain break, brain break, brain break. So they will know that there is a brain break coming. When I use it with the students, the classroom are different now. How long do brain breaks typically last? Two, three minutes. Sometimes in the target language and sometimes no, it's not in the target language. Like for example, just dance, just dance. And it is not mm -hmm. in the target language. The students will send me songs on YouTube said i want to do just dance for this just dance for this for uh, future you know and this is how i choose uh, brain breaks i have i don't know if you heard about we'll decide so we'll decide where i go and i write all the brain breaks i know and i will click on the we'll decide and whenever the uh, the, the name comes like uh, mm -hmm. we we'll, will we will do that brain breaks 
So this is more organic, like more, uh, because already if I ask the student which brain break you will, you want to do, everybody will raise their hand, like everybody, and like each student has his favorite or her favorite brain break. Mm -hmm. but so whenever I do that, oh, okay, based on we'll decide. So I'll make sure and put a link in the show notes to actually I have a blog post on using Wheel Decide. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, just so everyone knows it's a website where it's a digital wheel and mm -hmm. you click on it and it spins and you can put anything you want into the wheel and whatever it lands on is what you do. It's fairly easy to put together. But I do have a, a blog post that on it. It's interesting that you mentioned that. So I'll make sure that goes in the show notes. I, I don't use it just for the, you know, brain break. I use it for speaking activities. Even if uh, I use it, I, I, I write the name of the students on the wheel decide sometimes. If I want to mm -hmm. ask somebody or topics and stuff like that. That's good. Yeah. Like it's a good uh, uh, website, actually. Yeah, and it's free. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's the most important thing yeah. always is that it's free, right? Yeah. So you had mentioned with the brain breaks that sometimes it's target language. Sometimes it's it's in the in English, I guess, in your classroom. So with that happening, do you find some ways of connecting the content to them or is it sometimes just very different? Sometimes it's very different. It's not connected what, of what I'm teaching, but most of the time it's not connected. But sometimes this is, a, I, I try to use like for, like I said, just dance or mm -hmm. this or that. I will use it for example, there is another brain brace called this or that, where mm -hmm. I play on YouTube and I will look, for example, this or that Arabic food. And there is a lot of options to use it in the classroom. And mm -hmm. after the students choose, uh, like, if, for example, hummus or falafel. Mm -hmm. And the students, I will go to falafel and will we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. And they will, uh, they have to do like a sort of dance. Mm -hmm. or they will do like some practice mm -hmm. or something like that. So I, I like to connect it, if I can, connect it to mm -hmm. a culture. So I think that we are often very much on the, the target language in the classroom and everything has to be connected and we don't have a lot of time. And I think that if we look at these brain breaks that, you know, they're not necessarily going to be connected to the content because it is an opportunity for students to remove themselves from the content for just a couple of minutes and then when they go back they'll actually be more focused like that's the point of doing it in the first place so if you're trying to keep the target language and the focus happening during the brain break then it kind of defeats the purpose a hundred percent a hundred percent it's a break it's a brain mm -hmm. break you don't have to do it in arabic or the spanish or something yeah. and even like it, but like if you do just dance in the arabic song or english song it's fun the same thing, mm -hmm. they are dancing, so it's mm -hmm. not, they are not learning the song or learning the word of the song. They are just mm -hmm. dancing with the music. So I think that teachers are listening to this and thinking, okay, I see the benefit of this, but they're probably going to want to leave this episode with some brain break ideas. So I think you probably have a lot of brain break ideas. So could you share a couple with us? We talked about the dancing, the this or that. What are other things that you would recommend for brain breaks in the classroom? There is um, a brain break I learned from La Mostra Loca. It's called the um, obstacle course. You will go to YouTube, write obstacle course, and you will see a little guy doing, a little boy doing some like activities. So whenever I do it, like I will let the students, everybody stand up. I play the video or the YouTube, and I we will do the same movement that the little guy, little, little boy doing it. Yeah, and I will say it this way because they are seeing the, like it's command, like TPR, but with video. So, injury, mm -hmm. uh, like run, 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 stop, run, run, jump, run, you know? <laughs> and it is good. And the, the nice thing about this one, you can change the speed of the video. Mm -hmm. So instead, like they will, they will run fast or some, something like that. Another one, for example, uh, the students will stand up in a circle. This is my one of my favorite. Everybody will stand in a circle, and this, uh, we will count to 10 in the target language. Or in English, if it is a new classroom. And the student can say number, one number, two numbers, or three numbers. Like, for example, and they will sta sta start saying the numbers from one to 10. So I will say, for example, واحد, one, two, Three, the another next one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Anybody will say ten when he has to sit down. 
and we continue one two three four five six seven eight ten until and it is uh, until the end we'll have two students and who is the winner uh, like if you see 10 you will lose you uh, i don't right. know if they got it but this is uh, if the students at the classroom more advanced you can continue to 100 anybody mm -hmm. will see 10 20 will sit down yeah, I've done some modifications with that using the same idea, but with days of the week, where oh, if God. you say, if you're the one who has to say Friday, so you can say Monday, Monday, Tuesday, if you have to say Friday, you're the one who sits down. I've done it with months. Oh if my you, God, this is a good, uh, actually, I'm right, writing it yeah. down right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so like when I do it in a French class, there are three months that when you write them, they have different accents on the letters than the <laughs> other months. So to make sure students are aware of that, we go around and we do January, February, March. And if you say one of the three months that has an accent on it, you have to sit down. You know, that's what puts them out. And it's that focus on there. But yeah, there's a, I love that activity. It works really well for so many different things. Another one activity, you remember like rock, scissors, you know, this one, but mm -hmm. we'll do it in the target language or you can do it with numbers. So we'll say one, two, three, and you, th you throw a number from one to five. Like, mm -hmm. e so everybody will stand up, each two together. One, two, three, and they have to, uh, like I will do, uh, I will throw a number from one to five. The first student who will say the sum of the numbers uh, is the winner. And like I said before, you can do it in the target language or not. The, and I usually I do it because I teach, like I said, Arabic three and up. So I will do it in the target language and we'll do it like this. We'll have the winner at the end. There is another game where I divide the students into two circles and they will have two balls. And the students have to throw it to the other students. If he doesn't catch it, he's out. Or if he, if like sometimes you fake, you are throwing it and he will move his hand to catch it, but he will lose because you are not throwing it. So the, the anyone who lose, he will go to the other circle and the same thing from the other circle. Anyone uh, one who lose, they will go to the first circle. We'll do it like three, four minutes, five minutes. And the students right. love it. Maybe I will share with you a link with, like okay. I have a link with some of the, a brain break activity, a presentation. I did it before, so I could give it to you. I'll put the link in the show notes um, okay. so that teachers can can look at that. I'm feeling very rejuvenated, ready to go back in my classroom and to try out some of these. Um, I'm a big proponent of brain breaks, and I tend to go back to the same one or two. So I'm, it's just great. You're giving me ideas of different ways to, to go about it. So thank you for that inspiration. Sure. And speaking of inspiration... I'm curious where you continue to find your inspiration from. Who are you looking to or conferences, workshops? Like, who would you recommend to us that you're, for your inspiration? In any conference, the best resources for you are talking to other teachers. So this is the best mm -hmm. resources for me. I like Meredith White. Also, uh, Dana Clementi. This is one of the first teachers who I learned a lot from here. But every conference you go to, you will learn something. And the thing is, if you learn something, this is a very good advice. I think a very good, somebody gave me this advice. If you learn something, don't leave it. And for like the second semester, no, no, no. The second day you go to classroom, use it. Because if you don't mm -hmm. use it, you will lose it. And this is a very important. <laughs> Whenever you learn something, uh, your classroom is like, a, not, uh, it's not like a Bible or a Quran. Like you can change stuff. Like, if there's something you like mm -hmm. it, try it. So I'm uh, sure that there are teachers listening to us right now who would like to connect with you. So what's the best way for teachers to reach out to you, learn more about you, maybe ask you some questions? So I usually Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. Um, in Facebook, just type Fadi Abu Ghosh and connect with me. In Twitter, if... My first letter F, Abu Ghosh, A-B-U-G-H-O-U-S-H. This is my uh, Twitter handle. I have also an Instagram, F, Abu Ghosh, and uh, Arabic with Fadi. Okay, and I'll make sure all of those are in the show notes so teachers can click right on and connect. As we finish up, I would really like it if you could give us a 
good piece of advice for teachers uh, as they are you know, going into their classrooms and whether it's about pacing their class, brain breaks, or just teaching in general, what is a good piece of advice you can leave us with? So, so we talked mm-hmm. about brain breaks. So, of course, use brain breaks. The other thing is connect your classroom with other classroom. 12 years ago, I attended a, a session by uh, Dana Clementi. She said to me, uh, lead with culture, language will follow. So usually start with culture. Since that time, I always connect my classroom with a classroom in the Arab world. Always try to connect your students with the students in the Arab, uh, mm-hmm. like for, for, for Arabic teachers for in the Arab world. Or if you cannot, use the technology to connect your students with the students in other classrooms in the States. Find ways to connect And it's not difficult. It's easy. I have learned so much from you, and I want to learn so much more. I can see that there's even more you can add, lots more. But thank you so much for your time and your energy and all of your suggestions with us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It was my pleasure. What are your takeaways from this conversation with Fadi? I'm sure going away from this conversation with a renewed understanding of the importance of brain breaks, along with a few new ideas I'm going to try out tomorrow. Be sure to check out the show notes to connect with Fadi. You'll also see the link to sign up for Talking Points, my weekly email newsletter with tips and resources for language teaching. There are also links to get in touch with me if you'd like to work together, either in person in your school or remotely. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. You've been listening to the World Language Classroom Podcast. Be sure to follow or subscribe wherever you're listening so you don't miss a single episode. Let's continue the conversation on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at WL Classroom. You can also see over 250 blog posts about language teaching at, you guessed it, wlclassroom.com.